The first example I'd like to show is DSLR imagery of the constellation of Orion that I took using my uh, Canon RA camera on a tripod with a tracker. So I have, in this simple example, light frames and some dark frames. That's it. No biases, no flats. Just lights and darks. It's kind of typical when doing certain kinds of DSLR imagery. So this is one-shot color camera information. You see the colors here in my file explorer, and that's just because my computer associates these files, CR3 files, with uh, color images. And so it knows to create a preview here. It's kind of doing a debayering on the fly. But when we uh, open up one of these files in PixInsight, it's going to be a, I've told PixInsight, load these files as pure raw. That's what we need them to be, grayscale images, in order to calibrate them. Uh, so if we zoom in, you can still see the Bayer matrix here is in place for this data. So let's go right to our new WBPP 2.0 script. And um, one of the funny things is that this, these images and this kind of imagery, say with DSLR ca cameras and data, you might think that's the simplest thing you could do, and yet there's kind of a curveball here. The curveball that's being thrown is the fact that the images were created by my camera and not by a software that writes all of the relevant attributes and information about the images to the header. Uh, and what that means is that if I press this button, and this button specifically reads the headers of files to know what kind of file type it is, uh, it's not going to work. Because if I try to load now my DSLR images like this, and nothing happens. There, there's nothing that shows up here. Now, as, if you're a beginner and you do that, you're going to go, oh my goodness, why didn't that work? Well, it didn't work because there's nothing in the headers that says this is a light frame, this is a bias frame, this is a dark frame. And this is why in my fast track um, introductory lessons, I say just to begin with, so that there is no question about what's going on, you can press these buttons and specifically direct files to go to the correct spot. So I'm gonna add darks first, and this will throw these images into the darks tab. Now, one thing that is nice in the darks panel is that it is reading it does, PixInsight will read that information even in the CR3 files here. Um, and it finds an exposure time is 320 seconds. So that was the dark frame exposure. You won't be surprised to learn that when I load my light frames, they are of the same time, at least approximately. Check this out. So when I load the lights, and that's all the data I have, I have darks and lights. You'll see that the lights are being, they're being grouped by exposure in a special way. They are 320 seconds, but they're plus or minus a second or two. The reason that's being grouped together like this is because of this parameter here, this exposure tolerance. If the, this is what groups these exposures by whatever the difference is. So the maximum difference between the uh, you know, three, uh, what is that, 318.9 and 320, that's the largest difference. As long as that is uh, encompassed by two, which it is, it's smaller than the value two, then all of these are going to be grouped together. And that's what we want, because as a group, we want all of these data, these light frames, to be calibrated, to be subtracted, uh, this dark to be subtracted from it, to be calibrated by this dark. That would not happen if we had no toler uh, exposure tolerance here. If I put zero, you'll see that now I have, you know, 320, 319, 318 seconds, or that they're actually by the decimal point exact. So that means for matching purposes, I would need to have, you know, three or four different darks here to match precisely. And it doesn't even matter that the times are very small. This truly is a matching uh, game. So if I didn't have equally matching darks over here, it just won't do like what you might expect it to do. So having the exposure tolerance here is what groups everything together and now every one of these lights will be calibrated by this master dark that will be created from this group. So as far as the darks are concerned we'll just let it create the master through the automatic settings here of image integration. For the lights we want to potentially do cosmetic correction. I will go ahead and show that to you, uh, but that's it. We're not gonna do anything else. This is just gonna be examples of calibrate only. So we'll leave everything else here. 
I'm going to exit, and the reason I can exit and come back with everything just as it is is because I have this here checked to save frame groups on exit. So I'm going to exit, and just for purposes of this example, I'll make a cosmetic correction template. I will turn on Use Auto Detect. Hot Sigma is what we want to do. And then we want to tell it that we're using a Color Filter Array, so it'll do this uh, operation correctly. I'll put this on the desktop and uh, rename this something reasonable. It doesn't need to be renamed, but I can do it. Cosmetic Correction. All right. So that's ready to go. Now I can go back to the script and kind of continue. This process I explain again in detail um, into the introductory fast track training course. So here we are again. This means now I can hit this apply and select that. So it is nice to be able to do cosmetic correction, especially because this is going to be noisy DSLR type imaging. This is an uncooled camera just out there on a tripod uh, doing its thing. That pretty much sets up this part of the, the uh, job. The last step is to go look in the control panel and to make sure that everything makes sense. So my recommendation is, well, you can click on everything that needs to be calibrated is what you want to click on. There is nothing that needs to be calibrated other than the lights. Uh, the dark frames are just, they're the darks. There's nothing to do. So we click on the light frames and we have our panel that shows up here. Uh, and there are a couple of things we want to do. You'll notice right now that this says that it is a monochrome image. It even has a little monochrome uh, icon there. Well, these are not monochrome images. These are uh, color images. They have a CFA going on. So we check CFA, color filter array. And then, as I mentioned a moment ago, after subtracting the, uh, the master dark here, that'll be generated from this group of darks. Uh, it's going to debayer the images. That's the last step. So the debayer method, in this case, it's set to auto, and I know it's going to work because uh, I've already done the discovery to determine that uh, uh, PixInsight already knows, or it's actually in the header, it already knows the pattern to use. If it didn't, I can specify it here, uh, but I know it's going to work. So that should take care of that. I'm going to create an output directory and my output directory is in a strange place because I'm going to put this where I've been doing this work here. So this is the DSLR example, so I'm going to put it in the DSLR directory. The last thing to do, and I'm just going to look at this and show it to you, we're going to see the same message when we hit the Run button, but we can hit the Diagnostics button to just see what kind of messages it's going to tell us. We can see here that these darks are matching, excuse me, this these lights are going to be calibrated by matching darks. We know that's true because it's lit up with green here. Um, we have a status of a checkbox, uh, a check mark here under the status column that's indicating that there is some reasonable way that it's determined to do the job. Um, if it can't figure out anything to match or anything else to do, the status will show you that that's not the case, and then you'll even get a helpful message over here as to what the problem might be. But this is certainly an acceptable thing to do, is to calibrate uh, these images with the master dark that'll be created here. And as you already know, we have uh, no bias, we have no flat, we're not going to optimize anything. And the filter is no filter because this is a, a one-shot color camera, um, you know, uh, sensor. So we're not moving filters in front. This no filter designation, I guess I can stretch this and show you, uh, that actually comes from WBPP because it didn't find anything in the header. So it just writes no filter. And if we had a flat here, which would also not have a filter, um, then it would put no filter there and that would allow them to match. I'll be showing that to you shortly. So let's look at the diagnostics. Here it is. It says check bias dark flat light groups uh, because no bias frames have been provided and no flat frames have been provided. Both are very true statements. One of the things that I would encourage you to do is that use this information in these messages not to be a judgment. It's not judging whether you're doing something right or wrong. It is factually telling you now uh, whether things are matching, whether they exist or not. So this is just saying, you know, check things out because there are no biases, there are no flats, and that's fine. 
as far as the light frames are concerned, it says that no master flat would be used to calibrate the frames. Yep, that's right. But it's not giving us any warning about the dark because we can see that it is correctly matching in the sense that uh, it's going to do it. So everything's fine, and I'm going to go ahead and do the run. You'll see we get the same diagnostic message, and I'll hit continue. Now, the interesting thing about uh, what happens next is it's going to save these files, many files, under that directory that I specified. So I'm going to come back when it's done, and I just want to point out, again, one of these introductory things, which is to really pay attention to the output of WBPP, um, that will enable you to, you know, to be sure that things are unfolding as you want them to, and you can examine and evaluate the data. And if it's not working, you know what to delete and what uh, to do again, or just to continue because it's all going so great. It's completed the job, so I'm going to exit out of here. We can look at the directories that are created underneath where I had. Um, specified it to save. Uh, you'll find that there are three directories here. We have calibrated, logs, and the masters. Uh, the master here is, there's only going to be one file. It's the master dark. That's what was created out of that group. Uh, so that makes sense. We have a log file, which isn't going to show up here because normally, you know, uh, that's not the kind of file you would open here, but here it is. And we could technically open it if we wanted to. And you can read the output. It's not going to be terribly exciting. There wasn't that much done here. Um, it's going to it's going to show here that uh, it did the subtraction of the dark. Actually, it'll make the master dark first. Then it'll subtract the master dark from the lights, um, do the cosmetic correction, and then do the debayering. But we can see that happened if we look under calibrated. We'll find there is a light directory because we have lights. We don't have any flats. And there are two directories that follow that. Here's where we have the calibrated, this is kind of our raw material. These are the calibrated light frames. And they are first cosmetized, that is with the cosmetic correction. And that's why you see the CC here. So let's, let's go back. Here's just calibrated with a one C. Then we have cosmetized, it has the two Cs. And then the last one, and this is how I know the order, if we look in this directory, you might think it should be nested under here, but uh, it is separate. But you'll notice that the D here follows CC, so I know that that was the last step that occurred to these files. So there's the process that uh, WBPP is doing. And just for fun, if we open up, uh, I don't know, a couple of these files or something, we should be able to see color images. They're still not stretched. Here I can just do a uh, screen stretch here and be able to show. There it is. So uh, obviously it's not color calibrated and those steps are later, uh, but we're getting what you would expect to see for the constellation of Orion. I can dimly see Bernard's Loop. I can see the Horsehead Nebula and the Orion Nebula and so on. So everything makes sense here. Let's just look at the others. That's a tree. That's what that dark thing is there. Yep. And these are this is what the, the fuzzy version there. All right. So there we have it. The very simplest example, the setup, um, is just with a group of darks and uh, a group of lights. And that's pretty much it. The only little curveball was the fact that without that header information, we had to just be careful about telling WBPP what kind of files they are, be it color files, and they need to specify that it should go into the darks and go into the lights panel and so on. By the way, I just want to point out the data that you were looking at in this section resulted in this particular image. It's just nice to know that with a DSLR camera, now this is uh, the Canon RA, so it is modified in the sense that it is uh, sensitive to the uh, red wavelengths of light, but uh, just with a kit lens and a, and a nice camera, it's uh, nice what you can do. And I didn't have that many exposures that are not dithered. I just used darks. Uh, on a similar note, I also, and this was on the same night I took this picture. So um, using this method of a WBPP allowed me to calibrate the data very quickly and get underway to produce um, some, uh, some nice Orion pictures. So I just wanted to point that out.